four LED lamps. Let's call them Do, Re, Mi and Fa because Do as in Do. This one's supposed to be 3 watts but actually is rated 1.5 watts. Re, this one gives out a nice ray of light. Uh, sorry, I just I, that's the only thing I could think of for ray. Me, this is my favourite. And Fa, this one is by Fa the most disappointing, as you'll see when I do the, the maths and uh, the circuits. So these came from an eBay listing, I'll just shove these down. These came from a single eBay listing by Ranpo-Lighting-CA. And basically speaking, in the same listing, they offer you um, a choice of wattage between 3, 5, 7 and 9. SMD type, which doesn't, it's not really needed. Main colour, which is going to be cold white or warm white, and the voltage, which will be 120 or 240. Now, when you select, if you do choose SMD type, it offers you um, 2835 or 5730. And all it does is if you, if you select those, then it just... The only lamps with the uh, smaller LED are the lower wattage ones, and the only one with the large LED is this one, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense, that option. However, I do have one of each of these lamps in warm white to take to bits, and the reason the covers are off already is because they're actually quite hard to get off, particularly this one, which clips on with no less than uh, six uh, clips, and uh, it took me ages to get this off, as you can see from all the chew marks around it of levering and forcing and trying to get it off. Yeah, this one was clipped on really strongly. So they all share a very similar structure. Um, they have, I'll, I'll demonstrate the big one. No, I'll demonstrate this one since it's, since it's my favourite. The printed circuit boards are just clipped in, and they come out like this. And they're not aluminium substrate. However, they are this sort of white substrate. I'm not sure if it's just a standard substrate or it's maybe one with a high um, ceramic content or something. I'm really not sure if it's just standard or not because there's no aluminium core in this. And although, if you look at the where the pads are, they have um, they have an arrangement where. With the small LEDs, they've got quite large segments, and with the larger LEDs, um, in this one, they have the large segments uh, to help dissipate the, the solder pads, that the the track area that the LEDs soldered onto. They also have this section in the middle just to give it even more copper to dissipate into. So um, they're relying on the copper coupling it onto the circuit board material, and they're absolutely peppered with ventilation holes, plus... All the cases are identical, from the smallest to the biggest, in that they have loads of ventilation holes and slots in the end and on the sides. They're really nice cases, I have to say. Quite nice lights overall, really. The diffusers are fairly... They're, they're, they cut down the light a lot, but they certainly spread it about. Um, it'd be nice seeing these with clear diffusers, or even slightly domed diffusers instead. Um, but anyway... I digress. The uh, arrangement of the uh, circuitry inside is, for some reason, on the bigger ones, the mains comes in on the edge, and it goes in between the LEDs like this, with the capacitor jumping across, to a bridge rectifier, where they've got um, the two outer diodes are connected by a central track, and then the two middle are connected to typically neutral, and then the, they're connected as pairs on the other side, and the pairs just go straight to the electrolytic capacitor and a tiny little um, resistor on board for the discharge, and there's a matching resistor here for the discharging the uh, current limiting resistor. And then the LEDs, because of course the mains is coming in from the edge, the LEDs can't really continue in a circuit round there, so it comes out the, the capacitor there, and it just goes in a sort of like a horseshoe shape where it jumps down and goes back again through all the LEDs, jumps back up again, missing the sort of mains terminals, and then goes back to the uh, other side of the capacitor. So very simple. Um, li likewise, the, well, similar on the um, little, the smaller size lamps. The same type of circuitry, very simple circuitry, uh, but all the circuitry is in the middle. It's uh, concentrated in the middle. There's, uh, again, well, a slight difference again in the smallest, where the circuitry actually concentrates the outside, but it's just a simple single ring of LEDs. Now, the LEDs themselves are either 2835 or 5730, and these two types of LEDs 
are notable because they're used a lot in lighting because they have a sort of heat sinking facility built in. They're actually taking the heat away from the chip itself. And if you consider that the, the 5730, or the big one, is rated is rated 0.5 watts, and you do the maths, hold on a second. Uh, typically the LED is going to be about 3 volts, um, so P equals IV, I, the maximum current, I equals P over V, so 0.5 divided by 3 volts equals, so we'd expect about 166 milliamps tops there. You often see these half watt LEDs being run about 145, 150 milliamps. So going on to the 2835, it's rated 0.2 of a watt, so uh, I equals P over V, 0.2 divided by 3 volts equals, so you'd expect a maximum about 66 milliamps for those ones. Now I've done a lot of tests on these, I powered all the lamps up and I uh, then probed about uh, haphazardly with a test meter. I measured the voltage across the electrolytic capacitor, which was basically the voltage across the LEDs, and I also shunted one of the LEDs out with the meter set to DC current to find the current. And they all sh they all share an identical circuit. I'm just going to shuffle things about here. These all rather conveniently stack like Russian dolls, so I'll just shovel these out of the way at the moment and bring in the next bit of evidence here. They all share a, a common circuit. They have the in the series capacitor, this one, with a discharge resistor across it, this tiny little surface mount resistor. Can you see it? It's really tiny. And it's 470k. Uh, then you've got the discrete bridge rectifier with four 1 amp diodes. You've got the capacitor in the output, which is uh, variable according to uh, the actual lamp, and then another tiny little 470k resistor just tucked across that one as well. Then all the LEDs just connected in series across that. Not really much visible flicker while I had these on, which was interesting, because normally when you've got the LEDs connected directly across without any resistor in series, you do get a slight sort of riding of the, the mains uh, waveform, but it, it wasn't really notable. The values of the capacitors varied according to the lamp. The 3 watt lamp had an 820 nanofarad capacitor, the 5 watt had a 1 microfarad capacitor, which is one of the highest I've seen so far. Then it went further, 7 watt had a 1.2 microfarad, and then the 9 watt has a whopping 2.2 microfarad capacitor, which is starting to get a wee bit squirmy for this sort of application, it's huge. The electrolytics are not rated for open circuit. Uh, if, the, if the LEDs fail open circuit, the voltage across capacitor will rise well above its rating. It'll probably pop. So in the 3 watt, it's a 47 megafarad, 50 volt. 5 watt, it's 47 megafarad, 100 volt. Um, the 7 watt, 10 megafarad, 250 volt. And finally, 10 megafarad, 250 volt again in the uh, 9 watt lamp number of LEDs. Uh, 10, 18, 27 and 20 respectively for the 3, 5, 7 and 9 watt. I measured uh, the voltage across the LEDs. You could have just multiplied it by 3 but you know I wanted it accurate. So here are the voltage across the LEDs. You can just freeze frame in this if you want to actually take a note at these. Uh, you know you want to actually take a more detailed look at these. So to I measured the total LED voltage. I measured the total LED current there by putting well as accurately as I could get just by actually putting a meter across one of the LEDs so that that LED went out and then the meter went in series with the rest of the LEDs. So it gives a fairly good indication. And I multiplied those to give the actual power being consumed by the light. And interestingly, having used my basic power meter to actually test them as well, um, I found that... Have I got a wee note of that? Yes, I do. Um, when I plugged it in, the one the three watt actually measured on this meter at one point seven watt, and it comes out one point five five. So that's point one five accurate watt accuracy, which is okay. The five watt uh, measured actual power three point one three six. This came out three point two. So again, within well, in this case, ten within tenth of a watt. 
the 7 watt came bang on 5.4 watt and then there was a slight uh, variation with the 9 watt one where it measured real power 7.8 watts but this meter measured 8.2 but again it's only 0.4 out so you know it's this is accurate this is surprisingly accurate it's the most accurate I've ever come across for for tests like this it's also a nice simple meter which is really good uh, this one, on the other hand, is a pile of shit. So, going on, uh, the actual powers, I mean, like, the 3 watt actually came out at about half its rating, the 5 watt came down at 3 watts, 7 came out at 5.4, 9 came out at 7.8. I suppose, in a way, the 9 watt was one of the closest, really. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, however, I decided to test these in a light fitting, and take a proper, I did it properly this time, I had the light fitting the ceiling with the lights pointing down open. I didn't have the domes over them because the domes scattered the light too much and because I got some weird readings earlier on that I thought, I think just to make a level playing field I'll just have the open end. And then I got the light meter and put it on the tripod because it's got the tripod mount and I put it exactly one meter below the sort of average position, the average difference between these lights, so there's only about, there's only going to be about that much difference between them. And when started, the lux output at one meter for the 3 watt was 50 lux, and I noticed that if you left them running for a while, that the intensity dropped as the LEDs heated up, as you'd expect, the efficiency of LEDs changes, it reduces as they get hotter. So over time it went down to 45 lux. The 5 watts started off at 97 lux and went down to 89 lux, which these equate to about a 10% drop for each of those. The 7 watts started at 162 lux and went down to 144. And then, keep in mind that this is supposed to be the higher power one, it starts off at 170 lux, which is not kicking the ass off the 7 watt one, and it went down to 135 lux, which is actually less light out of the 9 watt one than the 7 watt one. So it's actually drawing 7.8 watts, but giving out less light than the 5.4 watt lamp. Um, which was kind of odd. Maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe they're just really pushing it for heat dissipation, or maybe it's just these LEDs were less efficient. But uh, that represented about 10 watt drop for these ones, and 20, uh, sorry, 10% drop for these ones and 20% for the last one. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. Now, I'm not sure um, if it's a valid measurement thing, but uh, measuring that, it effectively gave, at one metre from the light, it gave approximately 29 lux per watt at one metre for the three watt from a central position. 28.4, which is close enough for the 5 watt, 26.6 the 7 watt, and finally dropping to 17.3 for the 9 watt. Um, so, in all, I do still think that the, the smaller ones are my favourites with the small LEDs. But, uh, yeah, this one was disappointing. It just didn't live up to the others. Um, so they're interesting enough lamps. Uh, I might uh, use some and give them a test, a, a long-term test, and just see how they how they behave. Now I have actual um, intensity measurements for them. But uh, definitely, I had a lot of fun doing that last night. It was quite enjoyable. So yeah. And that's about all I can really say about these. I do have a preference for the smaller LEDs and larger arrays. It just seems to make things much more efficient. But um, yeah, neat and neat enough lamps indeed.